is how did you find your job? Um, so who would like to start? I can hop in on this one. I think it's a pretty classic answer. I spent a while kind of curating my LinkedIn job recommendations and eventually started getting jobs that were what I wanted and that's how I found my position. I think it was also posted on Handshake as well though. Afterwards, I figured that out. <laughs> All right, thanks Nora. Anyone else? I can go as well. Um, so I actually found my do job through networking. It was kind of informal networking. I heard about the role from one of my friends who was a class of 2019 media studies graduate, graduate, and she reached out to me, shared some notes, helped me with the interview. All right, awesome. Who else would like to share? I can go ahead and add on. Um, I had an internship with the University of California Federal Governmental Relations Team. And um, it was actually a very subtle comment that I should apply for a Senator by the S team. And I previously had experience working or interning with the House of Representatives. So um, I was submitting applications everywhere and through uh, three different applications for his office and eventually the one that fit me best uh, reached out. Thanks, Roberto. Um, I can I can follow up. I'm the same with Nora. I actually found um, the job posting um, on LinkedIn, and I applied for it. And then I actually during that time they were having a hiring freeze, so I didn't really hear back from them like at least a month later. So I was you know it was <laughs> I was like really didn't think that I would get the job, but like the moment they opened up, like they reached out to me. Yeah, and just to add on, I also have a similar experience with Christina, where um, as a transfer student, I started my college experience in Los Angeles, and then I moved to Berkeley. So I still had that network down in Los Angeles and just connecting back with folks when school finished and afforded an opportunity through networking. So this is something that comes up a lot for students, especially LNS students. What are the skills that you developed in your education and experiences and how have they helped you with your job search and starting your current job? How about we go to Roberto? Yeah, so I think the very, I'm a political science or I was a political science major and I think um, as any poli sci major could probably agree with me, there's a lot of reading and a lot of that reading has to be very analytical. So in my current job day-to-day -day operations, I'm very analytical in the way where I read either policy memos, where I read constituent complaints, and I learn how to really maneuver the system with like the, with the Senate side, with contacting um, all these federal agencies and when writing out like emails, I need to sound very professionally eloquent. Um, yeah, I think that's that's it for me. So it definitely sounds like a clear connection between your schooling and your work. And a lot of times students don't see that. So thanks for sharing that. Anyone else? How about Tien? Yeah, I think to me, one of the biggest ones is probably communication, especially with the role that I'm doing right now. Um, I, I, you know, I pretty much communicate pretty much every single day, um, verbally and writing as well. So with definitely with psych, we, we, we did basically a lot of reading, a lot of writing. And I, I did a lot of counseling and like peer advising and also like mentorship programs and things like that when I was in Berkeley. And even just like the fact that I was working among many different um, departments and things like that when I was at Cal, it, it really helps um, with the communication that I'm doing right now with my job. And then at the same time, you know, like how it is like being at Cal, you you have like a hundred things at the same time you're dealing with. Just just the simple organizational skills that I build up when doing all of that, it, it really does help with getting organized to the work that I'm doing right now. Thanks for making those connections, especially regarding the communication and organizational skills, which a lot of organizations really value. Um, Andrea, how about for you? 
So as a transfer student, uh, I actually was very active in my community. I worked with a lot of nonprofit organizations in Los Angeles. So when I transferred to Berkeley, um, I built a lot of experience working in the community, a lot of organizing, hosting workshops, being in direct contact with community members. Um, when I transferred to Berkeley, I served as the environmental justice associate at the Student Environmental Center. And it was being very engaging with students, but also hosting panels and events and creating projects. And that's, those, I feel like I have more work experience than I do with the, than what I experienced during school, but that definitely supplement a lot of the research projects I'm now leading at my current position. Is there something that you would do differently about your job search? Would anyone like to chime in? If you had to do things over again, would you do anything differently? Um, I can go. So one thing I would do differently is I would have um, leveraged informational interviews a lot more. I know as a student at Cal, I felt a little scared reaching out, but just sending a message to alumni over LinkedIn, um, reaching out, alumni are always willing to help. I think that would have helped um, my job search earlier. And I, I know that networking is definitely, oh, a lot of students feel anxiety around that. So thank you for sharing that. Would anyone else like to share, Nora? Yeah, I agree with the networking um, aspect. I know I've spoken to Heidi a lot over the past year about how it definitely is something that pushes me outside of my comfort zone. Um, in university, I was really into like research and being alone in the library reading. And so I think this idea of like reaching out and trying to like gain those connections was really uncomfortable for me. And it honestly still is. But I was talking to my boss earlier today, who is the co-director of the Rule of Law Index. And she was saying that people reach out to her all the time for informational interviews and that she's always happy to do them. And she wants to help people kind of get a foot in the door. And so I think getting that other perspective from the other side, that it's something that isn't seen as weird or like too much, um, that it's something that they really wanna help with. And that was helpful for me also, and maybe something that you guys could keep in mind moving forward. Right. Anyone else? Yeah, I'll go ahead and add on to networking is very, very important and having those informational interviews. Um, I remember talking to Heidi a lot about that and learning how to really, you know, create that initial connection. And I actually reached out to one of our other panelists, uh, Christina, as we revisited earlier, and she was giving me all this guidance. Um, I think one thing that is really important to keep in mind, though, is to keep a some sort of tracker, whether it's on Excel or on a document in a journal of places you have applied to, as well as um, people you've spoken with and people that, you know, you will follow up with. Um, it's important to, to really, you know, keep that connection going. And, you know, I have to admit, I haven't even been the best at that. However, I think it's really important over as time goes on. Uh, what advice do you have for students who are experiencing imposter syndrome? during the job search process and in starting their first major job. I, I can actually chime in on that. So um, I, I think also it's kind of like relating to like the job search process as well, like that, especially, you know, when you graduate from such a place like Berkeley, like you hit, I, I was hit with the, the, the impulse syndrome right away. Um, and like, I think that's one of like the biggest area barrier that I got when I um, that kind of prevented me from like applying to more jobs that I could have. I felt like the, the self-doubt and like the fear actually got in the way. Um, what I would say like even during the job search process or when you first get your job, um, it's really important to know that you are not doing anything of those, like any of those things by yourself. Um, just make sure that you are having a connect, you know, like the, the supporting network around you. Like, um, when I was like doing my job search, like getting in touch with my mentor and, and talking, or even like I work a lot with Heidi and like having the people that you would know you can learn from and then you can, um, they can uplift you. It's really important to know that you, you have that support. And um, with my job, when I first started, to be honest, like it, 
it was, it was, I thought it, I kind of knew how to, you know, I was very familiar with being like doing peer advising and things like that, but it was so technical that um, it was just like so many things to learn from. And the fact that I, I have a, such a supporting team, it's really important. They, they let me know that it's okay, that you don't really know a lot and we, we're here to help you. And um, so like, that comes back to the point of like when you first, you know, deciding to get into a job, knowing the environment that you're gonna get in and knowing that you can actually grow in that environment is very important. So um, that would be my take on that. What is one piece of advice that you have for students looking for opportunities, especially during this challenging time? Uh, let's go to Andrea. Yeah, so I, I also graduated in 2020, but summer 2020. So it was, I think it's so interesting that just a year ago, the pandemic started and now we're reopening. And so it was a very scary time just in general for everyone during this time. But if there's, if I could be completely transparent, a lot of rejection, please don't. <laughs> I know this is where the imposter syndrome also occurs, but the rejections really don't define who you are. It really just opens another door for opportunity. And it is difficult, at least last year was very difficult because I couldn't talk to my peers. A lot of my friends just weren't available like mentally, physically at all. So I would definitely encourage like checking in with folks, you know, give yourself time after receiving a rejection that you were looking forward to, you know, take really take care of yourself because this period I feel is a period of rejection <laughs> for most folks, but just really take the time for yourself to take care of yourself. I just cannot emphasize how important that is because if you're applying to all these jobs and you're looking for to specific job, I feel like if you could restructure your way of thinking and say that, okay, I'm just gonna go to the next job, but also give, just give yourself time. I, I just cannot emphasize that. But the best advice I would say is give yourself time for self-care and also check in with peers, you know, look for your community where folks could support you and folks, folks that really wanna see you um, progress within this job search. Yeah, Andrea, thank you for bringing up the need for self-care and community, especially dealing with rejection, which is not easy, but it's a part of life. So thank you for being transparent about that. Um, anyone else, any, any piece of advice for students who are looking right now and are having a really hard time? I was going to hop in on that too, just to say that I think um, just know that there are a lot of things that go into deciding a candidate and it might be something as small as like your timing of when you apply if you get a rejection and so like I see people all around me take rejections very personally and it's something that all of us have gone through and I felt bad about it and um, yeah I just wish that I could <laughs> give like love out to anyone that is feeling bad about rejections because it hurts but it's something that I mean, a lot of this job search process is is luck, honestly, and so don't take it personally. Um, but also on a very technical level, something that I think is helpful through the job process and and through like following up with jobs is make sure to to follow up on applications. And I think this is something that I forgot a lot, and people that I know forgot is that when you're sending out all these applications, don't send them out and forget about about them. <laughs> Keep a tracker and, and send follow-up emails, as many as three. The, the most recent set that I um, sent out before I got this position, um, all the interviews I got, I followed up three times on all three of them. So I would say that's a very technical piece, but it's something not to forget about and something that I think could be helpful in the search. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that tip, Nora. Yes, I think given how many applications go out, the necessity for tracking and follow-up is so important. Um, so thank you for sharing that with students. Anyone else wanting to provide some advice to students as they're looking for opportunities at this time? 
Yeah, I can add on a little bit more. Um, definitely the need to, you know, be aware that rejection is going to happen, but, you know, try to let it empower you somehow that there are plenty, plenty of other opportunities, especially now that we're hopefully nearing towards the end of the pandemic, many more opportunities are slowly starting to open up. Um, also, the importance of keeping a tracker, super, super important. You don't want to get lost and you don't have to reapply to some job you've previously submitted an application to. Um, I think the one thing I'll add is when, if you decide to network, which I highly recommend, um, get outside of your comfort zone and talk to people you really wouldn't think to, to open up a new perspective in the job search. Uh, while I was poli sci, I did you know, reach out to people out in the tech world and even in, in the medical world just to see what other perspectives people have to offer. And it's definitely something that I'm going to keep in the back of my mind because I know that I can use my education and my current experience in many other ways if I decide to switch in the future. Uh, what is one piece of advice that you have for students as when starting their first job? I know that's a major transition. And there's a lot of things, I know Tian referenced all the technical knowledge that she had to learn um, and, and the need for community during that time. What is a piece of advice that you have for students as they're starting their first jobs? Uh, let's go to Christina. I would say don't discount your work experiences. I know early on, I felt like I did not have enough relevant experience to get my current job, but it's all a matter of reframing it and reach out to your community. You may see, I don't have the right experience, but maybe you actually do have a lot of experience. Um, I know for me, I did a lot of customer service jobs. Um, definitely put that in your resume. They, all jobs want people that are good communicators and that can multitask and are hard workers. Thank you for that. And reminding students, regardless of position, there are so many transferable skills that they can connect to roles. All right, anyone else? Any other advice about starting a new job? I have a, a weird piece of advice. Um, of course, you always want to give 100% with your new job and be on top of it, be you know, a leader in any aspect you can, whether it's with yourself, with the team, um, show that initiative. But um, I think something that I accidentally did was when I started my job, I was still in this high pressure Berkeley mentality that I forgot to ease out of a little bit. And um, while you're a very, very busy student at Berkeley juggling however many units, many extracurriculars, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's not like that once you get into the working world. And I think that's important to, um, you know, try to slowly realize and not put 300% on your, in your first week at your new job. Um, I think that's very important. If I could just hop in and express my agreement to that, I think once you are in a position, I mean, obviously the interview process is such a grind, but once you're there, um, you know, be honest with your coworkers. If you don't know something, be honest with your supervisor. If you don't know something, it's, it's not a competition and you're working together towards a shared goal. And I think that's something that can be really helpful. And it, it's not expected that you know everything in your first job. Um, so reach out and ask for help within that, that space once you're in. I completely agree with, with everything that everyone just said. And, um, and also like along the line with what Roberto and Nora said, I think um, especially coming from a really competitive and like, you know, jam packed of like the, how you are in Berkeley. Um, I, I got in my first job being with that very fast and competitive kind of mindset, but um, learning how to balance that and ease down. And that also like, it's very natural when you first come in, you'll be comparing yourself to others and trying to stand out and things like that. But um, it, is, it is at the end of the day, I, it, it, I guess it would depend on everyone's kind of job, but most of the time it'd be a teamwork. And um, just, just know that you, you're providing that support to them. And then also knowing your, your strengths and your unique style, you, you are very different from everyone else. So just, you know, as, as long as you, 
you really care about your job and really want to do it well and other people can feel that then you they would they would naturally help you and um one very last thing is just like when i first got in i got a little um meet up with like my my the interviewer that i first talked to and she was like a super super nice lady and i asked for her advice for when i was you know how i would be approaching my job and how i can develop in this you know, like the new environment. And I think one of the, that's one of the good things that you can do when you first got in, just ask for the experience from the people that have been there. And um, she did mention that part that it's important to, to develop the communication skill from both with the people that you're working with outside of your workplace. Like for me, it's gonna be the students and parents and like other staff members, but, um, but also hone on the communication skills within your team and within your own workplace. So th those are the two keys that can help you basically, you know, they you thrive everywhere you go. Thank you, Tian. Thank you for sharing that. Andrea, did you wanna add any final thoughts on this question? I think everyone, I would just agree with everyone. And um, I guess another piece of, of advice was, um, in my team, I'm the youngest person. So please don't be intimidated if you're the youngest person of your team. They don't let it get to you. There may not be certain ways you can relate to your coworkers and that's perfectly fine. Um, you're gonna have other forms of knowledge that you could bring to the team. Don't hesitate on that. You know, I think if you have a team that's very supporting and productive, they'll be willing to support you in that aspect. Yeah.